So welcome again. My name is Eric Baber. I'm the director for professional learning and development here at Cambridge University Press. And I'm very pleased to, um, to in a moment, hand over to David Valent, who is our closing speaker for our event for today. So David is coordinator of the IATEFL Young Learners and Teenagers Special Interest Group. And he works as a PhD research fellow in English language and literature subject pedagogy at Nord University in Norway, where he also teaches on a master's degree in primary education. David has over 20 years experience as a teacher, teacher educator, academic manager, author and editor, and his special interests include children's literature and ELT, primary and secondary teacher education, and inclusive practices. David's publications comprise a recent chapter on syllabus developments in primary ELT for the Routledge Handbook of Teaching English to Young Learners. And he's also the reviews editor for the Children's Literature in English Language Education Journal. Sounds like you're a very busy man, David. And with that, with no, without further ado, over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Eric, for that introduction. And thank you to all of you around the world for coming to the final session today. And huge thank you to Cambridge University Press for inviting me to give this final session today. Um, this is especially for all of you who are teaching children, primary age children of around ages six to 10 online or sending work for them to complete at home in this rather challenging period. And we'll be looking at practical ideas to increase the interaction around learning at home for children. Okay, so what are we going to be looking at in this session today? All right. Let's see. So this is our menu today. We're going to be looking at practical ideas and, interact and interactive ideas for the four skills, as well as for working with stories. And then at the end, we'll pull together some key principles that you can take away with you for your own online lessons or when you are sending work for children to complete at home that make it both practical and interactive. I want to start with this quote from James Bork, and this is James Bork writing in the ELD journal because it's something I think sometimes we can forget. I think sometimes teachers, for, teachers of language forget this when they're working with children in the physical classroom, and I think it's especially a possibility we might forget it when we're working in the online format and when we're sending work home for children to do. So really the key message throughout today's session is going to be to really avoid falling into that kind of trap of exercises and completing um, things in a sedentary way. Remembering children's worlds, the worlds that children inhabit, the world of imagination. Um, if any of you were at the song session earlier today, that magical world. So really um, bearing that in mind with our online lessons with children and when we're sending work home and really tapping into that creative, imaginative world and also the world of fantasy. So this quote really underpins what we'll be focusing on today. All right, so the two principles for you that I'd like you to think about is ways to provide practical hands-on activities and tasks. Those of you who teach children already will know of the importance of making English language learning very practical and very activity driven. So we want to harness that, keep that when we're working in the online format and also, as we know, for teaching a language, any language to any age range, language learning needs to have plenty of interaction to be effective. And so we'll be thinking about ways to integrate, to intersperse, to inject that level of interaction around the four language skills. Okay, so those are our two key principles we're working with today. All right, let's make this concrete then. Let's make it very clear. So little task for you, but you can type your, your suggestions 
into the chat box there. Um, this for me posted recently on, on social media and I really liked it because it's very visual um, and it acts as um, so something that you have next to you um, when you're preparing your online lessons and really dip into it's a nice little visual menu of ideas for warmers when teaching online now some of these are for children some of these are for teenagers and perhaps some of them are for adults but thinking about children aged around six to ten i've pulled out for you based on these ideas from jane carvel four key principles so I'll say one of the principles and I want you to type in the chat box an example that you can see from Jane's on warm up ideas there. So the first one then is make use of children's environments at home. So let's make the most or maximize the fact that children are in the house, in the apartment, they're at home. So look at the activities Jane suggests there and give me your ideas. Excellent, okay, treasure hunt, describe your home, excellent, lovely. All right. Draw on children's preferences and passions, so using their interests as context for your online lessons. So just have a look there. Exactly. Excellent. Talk about your toys. Show your pet. Brilliant. Name that tune. Love it. Also, activities which enable children to show and tell online. Very important for interaction. Showing and telling. Brilliant. Excellent. Lovely. Yes. Family photos. Really nice. What are you into? Very personalized. Excellent. Okay. And very importantly, this quite unusual situation that we can see as a real positive is maximize children having other voices at home. Now, by other voices, I mean family members, parents, brothers, sisters. So how can we maximize that? Have a look there. So I'm thinking here about the how to. So if you see the how to make a cup of tea and so on. So the children can really get that support from an older brother, an older sister, from a parent, a grandparent and so on at home. So we can make the most of that to give them support by drawing on the help of the family in our online lessons with children. So I thought that was a very nice one to share with you that you can refer to. It really gives you a clear example of the suggestions that I'm going to be making around interaction, around making learning practical. Okay, moving on then. I'm going to be giving you material I'm going to be demonstrating today is freely downloadable and you can see the link there that on the Cambridge website, the Fun Skills website, and you can download the, this home booklet. So we've got um, home booklet two, which is pre A1 starters level, home booklet four, this is uh, A1 movers level, and home booklet six, this is A2 flyers level. So for different language levels there, and I'm going to be sharing ideas with you for working with each of these different language levels. And we're talking about children, as I said, around six to 10. And we'll be looking at the four skills and stories for each of these levels. Now, the thing is, because these home booklets were designed specifically for working at home and for children learning more independently at home with the help of family, there isn't a teacher's guide. So it's not like a course book. And in a way, this gives you the freedom. It gives you the freedom to be creative and the freedom to really experiment. However, they weren't originally designed for online learning. So what I want to do today is really share this great resource with you, but also give you some support by giving you lots of ideas for how you can bring the home booklet into the online learning environment. 
Okay, and what I'd like to start with is reading, all right? So, remember, make it practical and make it interactive. So let's start with reading. We're going to look first of all at home booklet two, which is pre-A1 starters. Okay, so here's a reading all around um, the park. So the children developing their visual literacy there, the children are looking at the picture, and they are reading the sentences, the five sentences, they're deciding yes or no. So a child-friendly, true, false style reading exercise. And we want to make this practical and we want to make it interactive. So the first way to do this is through our lead-in activity. So pre-reading. What could we do in an online lesson pre-reading? So my first idea for you today is a guided visualisation. So drawing on children's own experiences of the world, and there's a chance they've been to a park before, that there is a park in their town, in their city, and you could do a guided visualisation where the children close their eyes, they picture that park in their mind's eye, what's in the park, what can they see in the park, who is in the park, what are they doing in the park. So personalising, starting immediately from the children's own experience. And then, to make it interactive, we can use the activity Teacher Says. So look at the actions there. For example, two ducks are swimming on the water. So teacher says, swim on the water. So the children swim on the water. Or, um, and if teacher doesn't say, the children don't do it. So it's a classic TPR activity, but it brings in that interaction. Now, what you don't want when you're doing your online lessons is you don't want it to be excessively teacher centered, just in the way in our physical classroom, we don't want to be excessively teacher centered. So we can hand over and have the child. So Ahmad says, or Susan says, or um, Wang says, etc. So give them that good, clear model and then hand over these activities. So how can we lift that reading task where it's a, a yes, no sentence off the page? So one of my favorite quick and easy ideas is through mini whiteboards. And I love mini whiteboards for on learning. So for a, these are really simple and really easy to make. So a homemade mini whiteboard that I made earlier. Can you see that? So all it is, is a plastic pocket with white paper inside. All right, so homemade the whiteboard, mark a pen, the children can draw on and hold up, yes, hold up, no. And then afterwards, remember you need the right kind of marker, so remind the children it needs to be erasable, and then they can erase and reuse again. So this is great for um, checking answers in a physical way and also for holding up words and so on. So the mini whiteboard is your friend. Also, so is the post-it note. Brilliant for lifting that material off the page and interspersing that practical interaction. So very simple, but very useful to enliven the material. And then we want to involve families. So here you can see a design your own park activity through junk modeling, through Play-Doh, and where you make this material into material for online lessons, in the next lesson, the children then present their park. So they show and tell. And remember that goes back to Jane Carvel's ideas of showing and telling. So it's a great way to link the work they've done at home with the family back into the online lesson in the next lesson. So those are some ideas for you that you can adapt and use with other reading activities and other reading texts and materials at the pre-A1 starters level. Moving on then to the uh, movers level. 
A1 Movers. So here we have um, Sasha's blog, and it's a text all about the zoo. So again, very child friendly and in the child's world. And just like we visualize the park, imagine the park, what can you see, who's the park, what's going on. Similarly with the zoo. So the child will have either been to the zoo or certainly seen a zoo on TV, in a book and so on. So that guided visualization, really, really useful. Looking at all of that vocabulary, so for that, those missing words, teacher, pandas, parrots, and so on. So that classic back to the board activity, which I'm sure you've played in the, in the physical classroom where the child takes the hot seat and it can be in groups and so on. And the other children give examples of a mime to try and get the, the child in the hot seat to say pandas or parrot or opened, etc. And this can be done as a back to the webcam activity. Okay. So adapting these classic classroom, physical classroom based activities to the online virtual learning environment. And then to make the reading tasks more interactive, we can again use our mini whiteboards where the children hold up the words, erase their words or the post-it notes as well. Um, activity for the family, Liz. Designing a comic strip, Sasha's blog is all about a trip to the zoo. Well, a creative idea is designing a trip to the bottom of the sea. Remember James Burke's quote about fantasy, make believe, imagination. So a comic strip about the bottom of the sea. And again, it's not just something they do. At home, outside of English lessons, they then bring this and present and they say what they took to the bottom of the sea, how they got to the bottom of the sea, who they went with and the things they did at the bottom of the sea. So making it very interactive there. And now for our higher level, our A2 movers, we see this... Um, blog is it yes no a diary entry a diary entry and we have two different countries here so bringing in a little bit of intercultural learning and we have Norway which is coincidentally where I am now where it's snowing and we also have China and so when we're working with countries online I always like to use a Peter's projection map why because what's great about the Peters projection map is it shows the world in its actual proportions, which visually in itself is great for the development of children's visual literacy. So I have the children find Norway on the map. Anything they know about Norway, have they seen Norway on television, anything about China they've seen, and then to engage them in this text. Similarly, we have these objects. So we have the backpack, the hat, the gloves, and the sunglasses. So you can see the pictures there. Well, we can enliven this, lift it off the page by putting these objects in our magic bag. Now, I really like to get the children wrapping when we use the magic bag. For example, what's that? in the bag. I said, what's that in the bag? All together now, what's that in the bag? I said, what's that in the bag? Remember, be brave, be bold and lift off the roof. Okay, so my backpack, my hat, my gloves, my sunglasses all come out of the magic bag. So we've really lifted this reading text off the page and we've used our objects and we've used our Peter's projection map to help the children predict. And then they can read and check their predictions. Link to this then, we have with the families, a creative hands-on task linked to topics. So China, we have making our Chinese lantern. And then trying to take 
take this further and making the most of the fact that the children have the, the support of families at this time working at home. So a little mini web quest with five questions all about this festival of Chinese New Year to bring in that intercultural learning. So when does it happen? What foods do people eat when they celebrate Chinese New Year, etc, etc. And then in the next class, they can present what they found out. Okay, so those are some ideas for you that you can take and adapt for other reading texts in the home booklets and in your course book materials and so on when you're learning online. Moving on then, now we're going to have a look at listening skills. So again, practical and interactive ideas for listening. You can download, by the way, the audios from the link I showed you before. So the fun skills link, all of these audios are freely available. So here's some ideas for these two principles to develop listening skills. So this one then, all around numbers. And so, bringing in your songs. So those of you who attended this morning, we were looking at songs, weren't we? Well, great for numbers. So reviewing numbers one to 20 using songs. And then you can see the dice there. Well, having the children make their own dice. So this is a great listening activity for listen and make. So making the dice. And again, making it interactive, we can lift this activity off the page by having the children hold up their dice, hold up the number of dots as well. Very nice quiz there where they're finding out some fascinating facts and again they can help draw on the help of their families for this. So some of my favorite child safe search engines are Searchy Pants, Kid Rex, Kiddle. So those are three uh, search engines you might like to check recommend that the children use and then they can feed back using the mini whiteboards again in the next online lesson. Okay, so moving on then to the A1 movers level and this is one of my favorite topics, food. Okay, so starting on a personalized note, having the children brainstorm their favorites. So starting from the child's world, remembering James Bork's quote in the ELT journal. So children brainstorming their favorite drinks, their favorite desserts, their favorite homemade dishes. Also a great one to make this more creative is have children brainstorm a different food for each color of the rainbow. So. Um, tell me some foods which are red. Tell me some foods which are yellow. Tell me some foods which are pink. Tell me some foods which are green, etc. So it's a little creative twist on brainstorming in a child friendly and engaging way. Having a, a way to make the listening class more interactive, having the children draw the foods so they could draw the foods on the uh, post-it notes and then hold them up. So making the feedback physical and a very creative task linked to this that the children can do with their families is a mini book. And the, the potential here is endless for crazy combinations. Some of you might know the, the children's picture book with the title, Do You Like Ketchup on Your Cornflakes? Which is absolutely hilarious for children when they can make these really crazy combinations. Right, so, and then they can share the mini books they've made and tell each other and ask each other the question. So, excellent question formation practice in a very child-friendly and embedded way in the next online lesson. So remembering that principle of show and tell, showing our mini books and then telling the classmates online what story we have made and then interaction. So asking each other, do you like um, ice cream on your meatballs and so on. So very, very creative potential there with this topic. Moving on then to the next level, our A2 flyers. 
Um, and this is all around animal habitats. So a very common course book topic and a way to enliven this is bringing in that action, bringing in that mind. So the Arctic, so this is me now freezing in the snowy Arctic. Also the desert, it's so hot in the desert. So the, the teacher can show the photographs, which I'm sure you, you do a lot of online, but then really involving the children by getting them to do the actions. So the jungle, the Arctic, the desert, and so on. Um, and then the children can make again the picture cards with the different habitats. And the teacher says, for example, um, a tortoise or a polar bear and the children hold up the habitat so a great physical way of checking the concept and checking understanding so how could we lift this um, listening activity off the page ready to do the listening well the children could recreate this table as it is there but on their mini whiteboard and then they listen and they fill in those missing gaps and then for feedback they can hold up their mini whiteboards so again it lifts the material off the page in a very easy way for you and for them and then let's get that creativity going work they can do with the family after the lesson they can invent an animal and they can invent its habitat what does this animal eat does the animal eat ketchup on its cornflakes and so on and then showing and telling they present their animal in the next lesson okay so those are some ideas for listening and now moving on to speaking so this one brings in the craft so what you have here is the object cards for a guessing game. So you can have the children cut up these cards. So this is in the book, this is book two. And then you describe. So for example, it's got two eyes and it's green. And the children hold up the picture of the frog and so on. It's a food and it's red and green it's sweet and the children hold up the picture of the watermelon and so on this links to the topic of holidays so to start on a personalized note you could have the children bring in and hold up a photo well not bring in because it's not the physical classroom but bring to the online lesson a photograph from a past holiday for example or they could draw an imaginary holiday and then they can take turns so it's a speaking task to ask and answer questions about their holiday where did you go what did you see and so on and then based on this odd wild game with the family the children can use those cards so you see those cards the transport the furniture the school objects the stationery and so on this can be made into, through the uh, stick notes again, into an activity and they can play this with their family. And then in the next online lesson, they can show their cards. So it's a very hands-on activity that really enlivens speaking skills. Moving on to A1 movers. So this one then is all about a dream. And I think this period, is a time when children should be really encouraged to use their imaginations and dream. So they, again, the principle of guided visualization, so the children can close their eyes and, and think about a good dream that they had, a really positive dream. And then they can draw on their mini whiteboards four things about the dream. So that's starting in a very nice creative personalized way and the speaking is asking and answering questions about that dream so what happened was it fun was it scary tell me more about your dream great speaking opportunity also you can work with those pictures those pictures of the boy and they use the four image to predict what happened in the boy's dream 
very nice creative task linked to this to do with the family is making a dream catcher and that idea of doing mini research the children can research using a child-friendly search engine why do people have dream catchers? What do dream catchers symbolize? And so on. And then they can make their dream catcher with their family and show that in the next lesson. All right. And then speaking at the A2 level, flyers, this is a very creative speaking activity using dice again and question formation. Those of you who came to this morning's song session or today's song session, we embedded our questions in the song. This is embedding question forms in a game, a personalized game. It would be very nice to lead in with photographs and have the children brainstorm. So a photograph for each topic. So you see we have food, we have games, we have places, we have likes, we have abilities. So the photos could introduce this and then the children predict the topics. For each of the questions, one thing I like to do with question forms to build children's speaking competence is fun and physical drilling. So stand up, sit down drill for the stressed words, the crocodile mouths on the stressed words, clicking and clapping on our stressed words and our intonation, all of these fun and physical techniques to really build children's confidence when asking questions. And then they can make their dice, that could be through a listen and make, and then they can throw the dice and then ask each other questions. They can then extend this by asking questions with their family and you should always recycle and always review by having the children show and tell what they did with the family in the next online lesson. So those are ideas for speaking and moving along then to writing, practical and interactive writing. So again, book two, our pre-A1 starters level. This is a nice idea as well for the feely bag. So we talked about putting our, <laughs> the feely bag that they aren't feeling, but they're looking at, they're looking at and they're guessing. They're guessing what's in that bag. It could be what's in the box as well. But you can do this with pictures, you can do this with photos, you can do this with your flashcards, the flashcards you usually use in your classroom and reveal the objects and have the children wrap. Now, a really nice one that children like to do is when you give them the opportunity to shout out the answers, because we're often saying in our physical classroom, don't shout out, raise your hands. Well, an outburst activity is an opportunity when we do encourage the children to shout out. So you have 30 seconds to shout out all of the things in your bedroom as quickly as you can. So this is a really active way to get the children recycling and reviewing vocabulary that's very, very child friendly. Or, and or you can put your pictures of the different bedroom objects in the feed bag. Remember that, what's that in the bag? I said, what's that in the bag? All together now, okay. Um, really nice creative task here for the families using an egg box and they make egg heads. Great springboards for role playing and speaking. With younger children it would be finger puppets and when children reach primary the egg head is a more primary way of doing the early years finger puppets. Really really like the egg heads. Ed heads. Egg heads activity. <laughs> and um, then have the children show their egg heads, perhaps not in the next lesson, because these seeds take a little bit of time to grow. And hopefully, by the time they do grow, the children will be back at school, we hope. All right, moving on then to our next one, which is A1 Movers, book four, and this is guessing the titles of the story. So a classic activity here. 
Use those pictures. So you have a picture of the elephant, you have the picture of the boy dressed up. So start with the visual, have the children predict. So bringing in that interaction, what do you think happens in the story? It gives them a reason to listen to the story, to read the story. Another one, one story is about the jungle, so that atmosphere of the jungle. Another one is about a snowy mountain. So an activity I first learned from Carol Reed is what she calls the sound collage. Now, the sound collage is where you have children close their eyes and visualize where they are. So you're in the jungle. What can you hear? What are the sounds? Now make your sound. And the children can turn on their microphones and make these sounds. Maybe someone's a parrot. Maybe someone is a trickling stream and you get this great musical collage to set the context in an engaging way. So that's a really nice child friendly way to lead into the story of the jungle and the snowy mountain. For this activity where the children choose the best title for the story, again, they could make strips with the three different titles and then hold them up and say why they think it's this title. All right, and then of course, a creative extension follow-up task for this is having the children make their own adventure story. So we have the story of the jungle, we have the story of the snowy mountain, and then the children are going to make an eight page mini book where, with their families and with the support of their families for making the book, but also brainstorming ideas. And this is a great way to involve all the siblings and parents and other caregivers at home to help children imagine and appeal to that make-believe for their own adventure story. And of course, showing and telling in the next lesson, they can show their eight-page book, mini book, and tell each other the story. Um, so a very personalized, very creative way to show and tell and provide that writing practice at home. Moving on to the A2 level then, this is Liars, book six. Here we have um, a very engaging story all about planets and outer space. So great cartoons there at the, at the beginning of a space journey. And using those pictures, the children can brainstorm the setting. So where are we? Um, who are the characters? What do you think will happen in the beginning, in the middle, and at the end of the story? And the children share ideas. So immediately we're bringing in that element of interaction around the story. And this is very important, this giving them that speaking practice to scaffold writing for children to then write their own stories. And you see those prompts in the word clouds there, the blue, the purple, and the red. Great craft activity to do with the families then is having children create a planet. And you see all of the equipment they need there, which are things that are around the house. And then they need their families to help them make that planet safely. And I'm calling this a jigsaw task because in the next online lesson, the children can show their planet and each of their planets contributes to a virtual solar system. So an online classes solar system. So a very nice way for each child to contribute creatively to this outcome. All right, so hopefully that's really inspired you with hands-on, practical, and importantly, interactive ways to develop children's skills online. Now, I want to move on briefly to stories, okay? So, now, I hope you've managed to download these uh, home booklets because you'll see there's QR codes. So you see at the top the QR code for the book two, which is our A1, uh, A1 starters level. And this is a story, Neda and the Alien. Okay, so 
how are we going to work with these animated stories to bring in that interaction? So again, a guided visualization. And this is life on the moon. So imagine you're on the moon. You're walking on the moon. Is it hot? Is it cold? How do you feel? Etc. And there we have our picture of Zach and our picture of Neda. And we can use those pictures to have them predict how does Zach get around, what language does he speak. So we're giving them a reason to then listen and watch the QR code. And this is a great way to involve families as well, those other voices at home, so that they maybe the children don't have access to the technology, the smartphone, the, the, the iPad or whatever, but the parents, the older siblings may have. If not, it's not a problem because you have the story here in the materials. So the children can use those visuals to predict, then watch or use the QR code or then have them read the story to check their predictions. And this is a very um, personalized story because it relates to the children's context of learning a language. So like the children are learning English, Neda, the character is learning Moonglish. And Zach is helping Neda learn Moonglish through pictures and painting pictures. And the children can then find out how to say hello in two different languages, so that mini research, and also paint more pictures to help Neda learn Moonglish and show those pictures, which are learner training actually, ways for them to learn a language in the next online lesson. So moving on then to the A1 movers level, we have Skippy, the coolest dancer. Another idea I'm borrowing from Carol Reed is the dancing statues activity, where we, we use very short snippets of music styles and the children dance in those styles. So show me waltzing, show me rock and roll, show me tango, etc. And the children hear those snippets, they show it, and then when you pause, they freeze on the webcam. So dancing statues, very child-friendly, very engaging way to lead in. Also looking at the picture of Skippy to predict, what dances do you think Skippy does? Does he rock and roll? Does he disco? Does he techno? Show me! And having the children show each other the dances, and then that gives them a reason to then watch the animated story, listen to the story and find out. Great way to extend this story for a speaking task. If you look at the story, it's a, there is Skippy and there's also the teacher. And so a mini dialogue, having the children role play the dialogue between Skippy and the teacher, very creative way to extend the story. And finally, with these stories, I have an example from the A2 uh, Flyers level, all about Jones, so the character Jones. And Jones is a bit of a superhero, as you can see from those pictures. And you can use those pictures for prediction. And also, again, an outburst activity, so drawing on the children's schemata or their background knowledge of superheroes. So, you have 30 seconds to shout out, turn on your microphones, I want to hear you, or type in the chat box, all the things that superheroes can do. And now let's compare by using the QR code and watching what Jones can do. Really creative activity is to have children invent a new character and then write about what this character can do, what superpowers this character has, perhaps doing an acrostic like you see there for Jones to give them those sentence starters and those springboards for creativity. So those are some ideas for you with the animated stories through the QR codes for the three different levels. Okay, so to pull all of this together, we've gone very quickly through reading, through listening, through speaking, through writing, and the animated stories. I want to share with you 10 key 
principles or ideas for working with children online and or when sending work for them to do at home. And here they are. So as you'll have seen, you'll have noticed from um, what I've been saying, the importance of, of that physicality of getting children moving, being active online and doing. So it's not passive and it's not sedentary. Appealing to the imagination and guided visualization. So having the children close their eyes and transpose transport themselves into other worlds. So we're out of space or the real world. We're in the park, we're in the shop. So that drawing on them, the mind's eye and having the children visualize is an excellent way to really um, lift the material off the page. Allowing for ideas generation and really drawing on children's families outside of the online lessons to help them generate ideas and brainstorm and then have them reshare those ideas in the next lesson. When you're working with your reading tasks and your listening tasks, one of the best ways I find to give the children a real purpose, a reason to read that text or listen to that text is prediction. So getting them guessing based on the pictures, based on the sounds, what do they think is going to be in that text and then the children read or listen to find out very, very important for online learning is the visual. So bringing in those real photographs and having the children also draw through the mini whiteboards and so on. So there's that strong visual element and also the tactile element of the malia through things like your magic bag, but also having the children hold up photographs and the children hold up realia. So it's not only come from the teacher. As you saw with um, some of the ideas, having the children invent characters, really important for creativity. Jigsaw tasks, we saw that through the Create Your Planet. So by the children sharing the different planets they thought of, we had a whole solar system. So that's really giving each child a role in the creative process. Drawing on the fact that they have their families to support them, giving them mini web quests to do at home and then share what they found out. Super important physical feedback. So feedback isn't what's number one, Muhammad. What's number two, Ahmad and so on. No, we want to really lift that, animate that using our tools to make it physical. Stand up if it's true. Wave, wave your hands in the air if it's true. So physical feedback. And super, super important is having those creative outcomes linked to the work you're doing online. So those are my 10 principles for English learning at home. I hope they're useful for you. I hope you have been inspired by this session and you're able to experiment with some of those. So my key message today is to be practical and to be interactive when teaching children online or sending work home. For more ideas there, there's the, the blog posts and the um, podcast that I did recently for Cambridge University Press, where I expand more on the things we've been talking about in this session. So do download those free home booklets and the audio and visit the blog posts. And hopefully this has been useful today. Thank you very much, David. That was fantastic. And there's lots and lots of praise in the chat window. I see words like amazing, fabulous, uh, inspirational. So fantastic, thank you very much. Um, I've, I've gathered a few questions. We do still have five, maybe 10 minutes. Um, just so I'll throw some of these at you. Just before I do that, a few housekeeping things. There's quite a few people asking about certificates. You will be able to download them in a moment from the chat window, but we will also email them to you. But coming back to uh, David, um, could you repeat, please, the names of those three child-friendly search engines? There's lots of requests. Ah, uh, yes, yes. So, so we have 
um, Kid Rex, so K I D R E X, Kid Rex, Kiddle, K I Double D L E, and also Searchy Pants. So search with a Y and then pants, P A N T S. So those are three you might want to try. There are others, of course. Super, thank you very much. Um, then a couple of very practical questions. How long should an online lesson be for learners of this age? And how many um, students would be optimal to have in one of those classes? <laughs> well, I, I, I think, you know, it depends how much freedom you have around that. It might be that your school, your institution has already set these things. Um, I think the younger the children, the shorter the bursts. Um, so it depends if we're talking about the six-year-olds or we're talking about the 10-year-olds, but we, we would, you know, with the younger primary, we'd be wanting 45 minutes-ish. Um, the older primary could be longer. Um, but, you know, it's important that you have plenty of variety going on there if your lesson is 60 minutes or 90 minutes or so on, because it is, you know, from the physical classroom, the need to stir, the need to settle, the need to maintain, grab attention. And so hopefully with this repertoire of physical and interactive ideas, you will be able to maintain attention. <clears throat> Um, the smaller the group, obviously, the more interaction you can have um, in terms of them turning on their webcams and, and so on. But it is important, no matter how many children there are, that they all do have an opportunity. And that's why things like physical feedback and using the nonverbal and using things like the, the mini whiteboard, the post-it notes, the, the, the gestures, the, the dancing, the singing, all of those ideas are things that you can do with bigger groups as well. So um, it really depends on what, what, what you're focusing on and, and how you intersperse these ideas. So, so have that variety and try and make it as hands-on as possible. Okay.